right. Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so I'm going to share two videos today. This first one's going to be very short. And I just want to give you an example of something that is extremely wicked. And it's very common to be taught in the churches today. But hopefully you see it. And let me play it for you and let you decide. Welcome to Smyrna Christian Church, where the entire Word of God is taught straight from the Bible. Good evening. Welcome back to Smyrna Christian Church, back in the book of Ezekiel, picking up in chapter 40 tonight. We are starting the Millennium Chapters. And before we even go to Ezekiel 40, first we're going to read Revelation chapter 20. And that's about the Millennium, that thousand year teaching period. And as we know from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, we always have to rightly divide the word. So what's the time frame that we're at here? I, uh, real quickly, I wasn't going to do this, but I, I hate it when people do this. Uh, what was 2 Timothy, what do you say? And as we know from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, yeah, I should have known that myself, huh? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Notice, he does not say of truth. If it's not rightly dividing the word of truth, what are you rightly dividing? Verse 15 we always have to rightly divide the word. So what's the time frame that we're at here? Jesus Christ has returned. The seventh trumpet has sounded. The vials have been poured out. God's wrath has been poured out. And now it's time for this millennium, this thousand year teaching period. And this is the time where those who did not overcome in a flesh body, they're going to have the opportunity to be taught. Alright, so he's saying that the Bible is a lie. And we're going to read, um, well, let's just go ahead and let it speak for itself. Let's yeah. get into... Yeah, let's, let's let the Bible... St <laughs> Man, this burns my rear end. You noticed what he said, right? You understand what he said? It was pretty clear. He says that after the wrath of God is poured out after the return of Jesus. Listen. Thousand year teaching period. And this is the time where those who did not overcome in a flesh body, they're going to have the opportunity to be taught. And we're going to read, um, well, let's just go ahead and have the opportunity. Let me go back. The vials have been poured out. The God, vials have been poured out. The seventh out. trumpet has sounded. The vials have been poured out. God's wrath has been poured out. And now it's time for this millennium, this thousand year teaching period. And this is the time where those who did not overcome in a flesh body, they're going to have the opportunity to be taught. Alright, so God's going to pour his wrath out. And then those that are not saved, they're going to be taught. So, God's wrath was poured out in vain. It didn't do nothing. Because there are still unsaved people alive. You, hear, you heard what he said, right? The, those that did not overcome, they're going to be taught. This thousand year teaching period. And this is the time where those who did not overcome... And those that did not overcome, they're going to get a second chance. And therefore, it doesn't make any sense. So you're... God pours out His wrath? The seventh trumpet has sounded. The vials have been poured out. God's wrath has been poured out. And now it's time for this millennium this thousand year teaching period it does not make any sense 
at all. And just from a logical standpoint, what you're teaching doesn't make sense, let alone the fact that it does not square with the Bible. It's unbelievable. I, you know, I almost feel like it's so obvious that I shouldn't even have to say anything. People ought to be smart enough to figure this out. But <laughs> let me point out two things here real quickly. I'm just going to make this real quick. Alright. So let's go to um, second. Oh, let's go to Revelation here. Revelation 20. Alright. So imagine God's poured out his wrath. It's, you know, we're transformed into our glorified bodies. And then there's this thousand year, uh, what do you call it? Teaching period? <laughs> God, that's stupid. It just seems like people get. Ah, I better, I better calm down here. All right. So at the end, okay. God's already poured out His wrath once, apparently, and now at the end of the thousand years, God's going to pour His wrath out ag again. The problem is when here, God is pouring out his wrath upon the earth <laughs> wow who's on the earth unsaved people I mean that you can't say that there are saved people on the earth when God pours his wrath upon the people it does not make any sense it doesn't make any sense at all Ah, it's just crazy. Just absolutely crazy. Okay, so let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Alright, so we're transformed into our glorified bodies when the Lord Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of heaven and then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory right so if death is swallowed up in victory then you cannot have unsaved people after this because if you have unsaved people after this then death is not swallowed up in victory not yet and the whole thing is just so stupid but also I want this is really I want you to think about this what you're saying is you don't have to believe you're telling unsaved people you don't have to believe in Jesus right now you can just live your life you can die no matter what whether you're saved or you're unsaved doesn't matter you'll die and then you'll get resurrected and if you're not saved now you'll have a thousand you'll be taught for a thousand years to believe in Jesus That's what he that's what he's saying. Oh my goodness sakes. I'm sorry, there's three dogs out there. Alright, so in Luke chapter sixteen. Um, there's a story of Lazarus, the poor fella, and the rich man. And the rich man says, see, he's, where am I at? He's tormented, right? And he cries, and he says, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the finger 
I'm sorry, dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Well, what's the big deal? He's going to get resurrected at the end of the thousand years, or at the end of a, when G, at the end of the world, or whatever. When Jesus comes back, he'll be resurrected. No big deal. He'll get a thousand years of training where he'll be taught the gospel. Right? No big I mean, What's the big deal here? But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in this lifetime, in thy lifetime, receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. But relax. You're going to resurrect, and you're going to get another opportunity to be saved. No, that's not what he says. At all. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham said, don't worry, at the end of the world you'll get resurrected in a second chance. And you'll get a thousand years of training. Don't worry about it. No, that's not what he says at all. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead they will repent and he said unto them if they hear not Moses and the prophets neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead now think about that if they won't be persuaded by Moses and the prophets and they won't be persuaded by Jesus Christ who has risen from the dead why would they then be persuaded if they were resurrected and given a thousand years of training what is this one-on-one -on -one counseling or something it's not it does not supported by the Bible anywhere this idea of a thousand years a thousand year teaching period now that's that's as cruel and wicked as it gets because there is only one opportunity for the unsaved to be saved and that's right now if Jesus comes in five minutes and in five minutes you're still unsaved that's it you will not have any opportunity the moment that Jesus appears the moment there's any sign that Jesus is approaching, that it's too late. It is too late. Your opportunity to be saved right now, that your opportunity to be saved is right now. There is no, you, I mean, you put it off, man. And, and then for people to teach this idea that they can wait that's cruel that's cruel because they can't wait nobody can wait if you're not saved right now there's no guarantee you'll be saved at all your opportunity is right now notice this, this is interesting because Jesus says what is or when he's asked what is the sign of thy coming of the end of the world the very first thing he says is take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many and what do we see today many claiming that Jesus is the Christ and deceiving many now 
for me, it's, this is obvious to um, see the lie, the liar, the deceiver. But I don't think it's so easy for many. Look at Mr. Fancy Pants here. He says, love the truth of God's word. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Terry Wellborn. Thank you. Thank you. And this guy's clearly a deceiver. All right. Now, it, again, it's not like this guy knows the truth and he's he's uh, hiding the truth. He's a liar because he believes a lie. And he doesn't care about the truth at all. And I think that's an important point to make. These liars are not people that know the truth and they tell a lie. These people, they want to believe a lie. And so they believe a lie and they teach a lie and they tell a lie. Alright, so let's go to this video here. I've not seen this whole video here, so I'm going to sort of uh, walk through this and sort of learn with you possibly and consider what these people have to say can I ask you as a question yeah okay um, so as a Christian I believe uh, there's eternal punishment okay like hellfire yeah. um, you, you can correct me if I'm wrong but do Jehovah's Witnesses believe that once a lost person dies someone who's not in the kingdom someone who doesn't believe in Christ, once they die that they cease to exist, like their existence stops? The Bible says when you die, you go back to the dust of the ground. Okay. And then Jesus taught about a resurrection. You know, as king of his kingdom, there would be a resurrection. Yeah. Like in John 5, 28 and 29. Yeah, yeah. Jesus said, you know, there's going to be a resurrection of the righteous and the unrighteous. Okay, so you what know? happens to the unrighteous? Well, they're resurrected, right? Because many of them haven't had an opportunity even to really learn about God and Christ Jesus. So they'll be taught, and then it'll be their choice, you know, as to whether they want uh, to serve God. Hold on, hold on a second. All right. Let's see. Let's see. But, you know, <laughs> sometimes this is almost too much. Matthew 24 verse 14 and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all, all nations and then shall the end come is that not enough I mean this is not uh, <laughs> I don't know how anybody could read that and get confused. And this, and the gospel must first be published among all nations, and then the end comes. Oops. Let's go back here. What happens to the unrighteous? Well, they're resurrected, right? Because many of them haven't had an opportunity even to really learn about. They didn't have an, I mean, they didn't have an opportunity. You know, I just wonder if these kids have even read the Bible. Now, I could speculate uh, on why that is. Um, so, here in Romans 1... Oh, I'm not sure what I'm looking for here. Ah, I forget. What am I looking for? Um, I apologize here. I'm not sure what I'm looking for here. Uh, I don't know what I'm looking for. Let me just skim through this real quickly. Alright, so I guess what I was going to say is, um, I was going to say, 
Oh, I think I know. For they, right there it is. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power in Godhead. So that they are without excuse. That nobody has an excuse. Nobody. And I mean, come on. In today's world, where the, everybody has access to the internet, even in all the jungles, okay. So you wanna, you wanna claim that you got spaceships in outer space sending down, you know, cell phone signals or whatever. Fine, that's okay. Sell your little fantasy. But also at the same time acknowledge uh, that there is nobody in the world today that has an excuse. There's nobody that has not heard the gospel. Now even though the gospel is not preached properly, um, that doesn't mean anybody has an excuse. Oh well, I heard that wrong. Well we are taught to preach the gospel right we're not saving anybody but we can preach the gospel so that people will think and so that God can work in them right it's no guarantee that they'll be saved but there's nobody that has an excuse nobody nobody has an excuse today God and Christ Jesus, so they'll be taught, and then it'll be their choice, you know, as to whether they want to serve it's God. It's a just or way not. of doing things. Yeah. yeah, it's a just way of doing and, things. Know, so, what they're saying is that you don't have to believe now. You'll die, you'll get resurrected, and then you'll have a thousand years of training. You know, there's going to be a resurrection of the righteous and the unrighteous. Okay, so what happens to the unrighteous? Well, they're resurrected, right? Because many of them haven't had an opportunity even to really learn about God and Christ Jesus. So they'll be taught, and then it'll be their choice, you know, as to whether they want to serve it's God or not. It's a just way not. of doing things. Yeah. So hold on, so you're saying, uh, I just want to understand. Yeah. So you're saying a lost person will die? and then resurrect again we all die yeah. and then have a second chance yeah. to do what to receive christ and the kingdom yeah yeah on is that what you're saying yeah so what we believe is just like christ jesus when he was on the earth right? yeah. he had the power to resurrect people right back to the earth right he raised them from the dead right back to the earth but they died again of course because they all inherited sin and death from adam and eve right that's why we all go all get sick and yeah and so why not teach a third resurrection or fourth resurrection i mean you get a thousand why not teach hey you get a thousand years we're going to teach you for a thousand years and if you still don't get it then we'll give you another thousand years it hey, will keep teaching you until you get it so everybody's saved and what are you teaching can die but uh, the resurrection under God's kingdom, in John 5:28, it says the righteous and the unrighteous, so they'll be resurrected both, yeah. right, that are in God's memory, and they'll have the opportunity to, you know, live under God's kingdom if they choose to, you know, obey God's God. Once they see the kingdom here on earth? Well, the kingdom is in heaven. They no, 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 but be, yes, one yes, day the kingdom will be here, yeah. right? Yeah. And then they have a choice to make. Yeah. Wow, okay, that's completely different than my understanding of what happens to someone who dies. Right. And, uh, you know, what happens after, after death. Right. right. Can we look at that verse? Yeah. Uh, John 5? John 5, yeah. 28 and 29. That's John just one five. verse. There Can I read from 26? Yeah, absolutely. So John 5, 26, and we'll just read a few verses. Yeah, yeah sure. For as the Father has life in himself... So he has granted the son to have life in himself yeah. and has given him authority to execute judgment also yeah. because he is the son of man. Do not marvel at this for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Yeah. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life yeah. 
and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation judgment or judgment or damn yeah. nation yeah. so but not not their past only what? what they do after they're resurrected because the bible tells us that the wages sin pays is death so when you die mm -hmm. your your sins are wiped out you start fresh and so judgment will be as so when you die your sins are wiped out so Jesus died in vain because your death covers your sins so the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth they that I have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation so if your sins are covered when you die then you have not done evil you understand how nonsensical this is one Jesus died in vain and two your death covers your sin according to this lady <laughs> this stuff is so delusional I just wonder in, in, in how is it that people could be this void of simple logic well I think there's a lot of I guess there's a lot of reasons for it. It's to me it's a phenomena that people have these delusions and that they are void of simple logic and I think it's really it really it's very simple. It's because they do not believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. Right? And this lady here, she does not believe the Bible that she holds in her hand she can't as Christ is ruling and uh, whether you follow those uh, laws the Bible tells us new scrolls will be open during this time under Christ's kingdom and it'll be whether those who want to everybody has a choice right whether they want to follow God's direction or so they don't why what <laughs> just to get um. okay uh, just help me understand so uh, so the wages of sin is death yeah okay and you're saying once they resurrect um, they're so they're clean slate right. clean yes. slate yes. and their their sins are wiped because yes. they died that's right yes. and if they resurrect and they have a second chance yeah. to receive the kingdom to come yes. into the kingdom yeah can you show me that in scripture? Yeah. Just so we're on the same page? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is a scripture that tells us that once you died, you paid the price for your sins. It says, for the wages sin pays is death, mm -hmm. but the gift God gives is death. For the wages of sin is death. Notice how they added the word pays. For the wages sin pays. See they added. See the what it costs for your body to sin. It's that the price to pay is death. 
right? But the gift of God is eternal life. Just from a logical standpoint, I'm not smart enough to understand how this phrase, for the wages sin pays, is death. I, I can't understand how your sin pays for your sin, or your sin pays for your death. So if you sin, then everything is taken care of when you die. So now you don't have sin. So your death pays for your sin. Because your sin pays for the wages of sin pays. For the wages, sin pays. See, sin is pain. So sin has a couple bucks in his pocket, and he pays the wages that sin pays is death. I, I just can't, I'm not smart enough to understand that. Uh, I can understand this here. For the wages of sin is death. See, because we sin, we die. Pretty simple. Now, notice here, New World Translation. This is a very modern translation. And I just want to point you to Matthew chapter 18. Alright, we'll scroll down here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And, ah. 11. Let some manuscripts here include the words for the Son of Man came to save that which was lost. Now, all this New World Translation is doing is mimicking or mirroring, copying, following the Roman Catholic versions. Alright, because they consider the Vatican manuscripts to be the authority. And of course the Vatican manuscripts are void of lots of verses. There's a lot of verses that they don't like and so they've taken it out. And uh, then they won't tell you, you know, if you were to go to Revelation, you know, they don't they don't even have revelation so they have to come up with a new standard to go by and the whole thing is just stupid it just tells you that these guys they don't believe the bible they hold in their hands and the people that make these translations they don't even believe that the words are from god they're from manuscripts they're from man All right, and, but we know we that are born of God, we know that the scripture does not come from the will of man, but holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Right? It's not from man. It's not from manuscripts. It's from God above. All right. Everlasting life by Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah. So the slate is wiped clean. And then. So, just. So, why did Jesus die? If our death wipes away our sin, then why did Jesus die? You know, this is so stupid. I can't hardly take it, man. The Watchtower teaches second chance theology. <laughs> All right, that's great, man. That's great. One mind. One any mind. This is great. I Here's the deal, though. I What I'm telling you 
is that all these guys are teaching second chance theology. 99.9% of all these guys and all these churches of all these denominations this guy, this gal, these people, that people, this guy, this well I don't like maybe I can't I don't know what that guy teaches but you see all these guys I do this every single day it seems like all these guys they teach second chance theology they do if there are unsaved people living after Jesus returns you're teaching second chance theology and that's as evil and wicked as anything anybody could teach in the world today there's nothing more wicked because the unsaved have one opportunity to be saved and that's right now